we are just talk about um, what we could say mathematical aspects of, of uh, variational principles, okay? So now we are going to ap apply that to solid mechanics or fluid mechanics, to continuum mechanics problems. So what is our continuum mechanics problems? Look, we have typically in the problem displacement-based problem, you remember in chapter uh, six, when we solved the elastic problem, we said that, well, the main unknown are the displacements, the displacements taking the gradient provide the strains, and the strains replaced into the constitutive equation provide the stresses, okay? This is not restricted to elasticity, it's also to plasticity, any nonlinear equation. So we are just saying that in the context of any constitutive equation, any constitutive equation, okay? Okay, so then what is the equation you have to fulfill? Well, the divergence of the stresses, which are a function of the strains, which are a function of the gradient of the displacements, plus the body forces, equal the accelerations, this is the second derivative of the displacements, okay? Equal zero in the domain B, the domain B that is occupied by the body at time T, with some boundary conditions. The boundary conditions are u equal u star at the gamma u. So that would be now in terms of the, the nomenclature that you have used, that would be the essential boundary conditions. So the unknown that we are dealing with is prescribed at this boundary. And second, then at t, we have some other conditions, which is a certain function, the stresses, which is function of the strains, it's function of the gradient of the displacements times the normal equals t bar. Or in other words, sigma times n minus t star equals zero gamma sigma. Look that this, looking at that, this is a function of the displacements and the gradient of displacements. And this is a function, this is a function at the ultimate, in, in the ultimate uh, uh, stage of the cascade is just uh, a function of the gradient of the displacement. Okay? So these are the natural boundary conditions. These are the essential boundary conditions. So if, we were, if I was a mathematician, I would say, whoa, this could be in certain variational problem, the essential boundary conditions. This would be the natural boundary conditions. And now I have to be to find what is the variational principle. So what is the gateau derivative of a certain functional whose solution is is precisely that this would be the Euler, Euler equations of this variational problem, okay? So now my problem is finding what is the variational problem, so that gateau derivative of a certain functional, whose uh, Euler, uh, whose uh, Euler-Lagrange uh, functions are these, whose uh, the, essential natural, uh, the essential boundary conditions are that, and the natural boundary conditions are this. Okay, that is my, is my point. So let's do, it, do that, but let's start from the top and go to the bottom in that case. In that case, I know what are the partial differential equations and the boundary conditions, and I'm looking for the Gateau derivative, right? So, okay, so let's first define what is the space of functions. The space of function is all those displacement functions which are in R4, because in R3, we consider that time is apart. You, this, the displacements have three components, so there are, are mappings uh, to R3 of all functions that fulfill not all possible functions in R3, but those that fulfill the boundary conditions. So those for U equal U star on gamma U. That is my space of functions, okay? All, all, all displacements fulfilling these conditions belong to that space of functions. From those, there are some that I'm looking for, the one that fulfill the boundary, the partial differential equations. But before this is the, the, the inside this space, I look for the solution, but all, all equations fulfilling that, infinite value, in infinite solutions U are in this space. Okay. So now, well, the variational principle, the gateau derivative, should be 
a catalytic of a certain functional. I don't know yet what the functional is. But I know that the Gatot derivative has to be, let's go back a little bit, that I am a mathematician, and I say, well, the equivalence of the Gatot derivative and the, the boundary value problem said that what are the, the Euler-Lagrange equations are placed in a first integral times delta u, and what are the natural boundary conditions are placed in a second integral times delta u. So that's what I do. Now, e and t I know. So this E is precisely the momentum equation. But just what I do is just, uh, just take this term and place to the other side with a minus. So I have something which is equal to zero. And that is what I place here. I multiply times delta u. I now do the integral on gamma sigma. And what I put here, well, the essential boundary condition, sigma times m, I pass that to the other side. So it's sigma times n minus t. Sigma times n minus t. And this is the second part. Okay? And this, I know, and this is the great thing, that the solutions of that problem are the solutions of that variational problem that states that these integrals, the sum of these two integrals, are equal to zero. And look, that's all important. Eh? For all, for all, delta u, belonging to B0. This is skip. I think, I don't, I think there's a mistake here. This doesn't play any role. So, look. That's very important. Eh? If this is only fulfilled but some perturbation delta u, this doesn't say anything. The key point here is this, that for all, for all. If I find some u that makes this zero, not for some delta u, not for some perturbations, but for all them belonging to B0, so admissible, so that the perturbations are any, any at everywhere excepting at the boundary condition u, at the boundary uh, gamma u, where the perturbation has to be zero. That's why it's time B0. So the solution of that is the solution of this boundary value problem. And that is what we are going to find in numerical methods. Okay? But look, this is not the most appropriated form for solving the computational, the computational, um, the, the problem by computational mechanics. I have to do some operations on that. Okay? Some mathematical operations. Look, by the way, we're using some language for that. B, the space where the solution of displacements are placed, is called the space of admissible displacements. Why don't they, don't they call them display, the, the, the space of displacements? Because not all displacements are placed on that. Only those who are admissible in the sense that they fulfill the boundary condition. Okay? B0 is the space for the perturbations. The perturbations that these perturbations belong to the same space than B. The only difference is that they are restricted to B0 on gamma U. Instead of being U star, they are restricted to B0. They is what this space is slightly different from that space. This is the space of the unmissable perturbations. Okay? And by the way, the perturbations delta U now are termed virtual displacements. I will explain to you why do we call them virtual displacements. But as mechanicians, as engineers, we think of them as virtual displacements. As mathematics, as mathematicians, we would think of them as perturbations. Okay? Okay, so the problem is that the variation, the, the Gatot derivative of a certain functional, look, I don't know the functional yet, for any possible admissible virtual displacement, have to be zero, have to be zero for Flinders equations, then the displacement is the solution of this partial differential equation system, so is the solution of the continuum mechanics problem. That's what I'm saying. Okay? 